What's up ladies and gentlemen, this is Jesse Warden. We got a question today from one of the commenters on my older videos who asked the question, what are employers looking for skill-wise for an HTML5 developer? Additionally, I had another developer who's been doing HTML5 game development for a while, but is looking to do more application development from a job perspective. So he wants to focus on HTML5 gaming in the meantime, you know, as kind of a side job, freelance type of thing, but he wants to get a real steady job doing application development. What can he do? What kind of skill sets does he need to know to get a job doing HTML5 development? I'm assuming you're talking about someone who builds applications, not a designer, not someone who's really good at HTML and CSS. So there's a couple things you need to know before I get into the skill sets. Number one is that it's all over the map from enterprise, agency, whatever else, they're all looking for a combination of these things, okay? So I've collected what I believe are the cross-cutting concerns for application development. Some will want, you know, specifics some more areas. Some will want more design, some will want more charting libraries, some will want more of the WebGL and design and SVG, and that's fine. But if you do these three things, you will be able to cast the widest net in terms of employ employability, okay? So number one is JavaScript. You have to know JavaScript, you have to know coding in JavaScript. Number two, you have to know some MVC framework. Don't care what it is, can be one. You don't have to know two or three or be an expert in all of them, just pick one. Number three, you have to know a CSS framework. Doesn't matter you know, what, which one it is, you just have to know one, be familiar with why you'd even know one. You don't necessarily even have to memorize the APIs or ever had experience doing a build system with one. But you recognize the value and be able to slightly articulate that to a potential employer, okay? so. Number one for JavaScript, let's get into some detail. You have to know how to code, okay? If you wanna know a quick and dirty version, in the future I'll do a video on how to pass interviews, but bottom line is you need to be able to sit in front of somebody in an interview and write a for loop, a map, some kind of for each with creative thinking around reordering strings and arrays. Go look up a fizz buzz on the internet and try to practice a few of those. Look up some code katas, that's K-A-T-A, -A, code katas. Look up some of those, practice in Notepad, get people around you before you've actually coded the solution and see if you can code in front of somebody. It's really hard if you're not used to coding those kind of negative, you know, high pressure situations, okay? Number two, you know, you need to know how to debug. So that means using breakpoints, that means using loggers, that means using the stack trace, that means going in the Chrome browser or Safari or Firefox or whatever IntelliJ or WebStorm tooling that you like to use, set breakpoints, you know, use the debugger keyword, use the Chrome development tools, whatever. You know how to find a bug in code, okay? Number three is you need to know how to log. You either can use console log or logger or XJS libraries, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. You need to be able to put those in there and understand what the value of logging is, right? How to get the code to talk to you. What's the difference between an error and a warning? Why does it matter, right? Those kind of things. Number four, you got to know what a stack is, okay? Some people don't ever care they'll never care in their entire career but some people will ask you questions about what the stack is and why does it matter and how do you draw things within the stack really elementary stuff i don't really care you know again i'm the kind of person that's going to interview people i've also been interviewed by people all within a year time frame so i've kind of been on both sides of the table i I've, I've seen a lot of people who want you to know what the stack is and what the difference between can you draw something to the screen multiple times in a stack, right? They, they, for whatever reason, think that this is a very important part of programming. I do not, but just be aware that's a question that'll be asked. Number five, you gotta know OOP. You gotta know object-oriented programming, okay? You gotta understand how messed up JavaScript is and how you apply OOP. So how do you create black boxes? How do you not create spaghetti code? How do you create separate objects, okay? Higher level, how do you deal with object.prototype-based classes versus just normal closures? How do you emulate private with local variables inside of closures? What are immediately executing modules or whatever the heck they're called, IFFs, blah, blah, blah. Like you gotta know this stuff. You gotta be able to articulate it, not blah, 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 like I just did. And using Google during an interview is not a good thing. <laughs> so obviously it's okay to use Google, but for some of these core questions, if you do it for all five of them, not a good thing. It's okay if you can't remember the exact phrase, right? If you can write it in code, hey, even better. Design patterns. You gotta know some design patterns. You'd be, you'd be surprised that a lot of employers don't ask this, but when you start whipping off how to do design patterns, they get either really confused or you know it's a slam dunk for the interview, right? So again, not interview advice, I'll do another video about this, but this is kind of the things that they want you to know. Do you know how to do the memento pattern? Do you even understand what a factory is when I say that to you? When I use the word facade or proxy, can you tell me the difference between the two? Um, you know, what is the difference between composition and inheritance? You know, those kind of things. It's good to know general design patterns. 
even if you can't really code them, it's just so you can communicate when somebody says it to you. jQuery. <laughs> so there's a lot of you who've been around forever. You grew up in jQuery and you've kind of graduated in MVC. I'm not one of those people. I came in with jQuery and MVC at the same time. In fact, I actually came to XJS, which abstracts jQuery away from you. They have their own query syntax, right? You gotta understand why you would use jQuery. A lot of people can't answer why they're even using it. They just know that they have came into the world and jQuery was in their left hand and they went through life with it and they don't know any different. So it's important for you to articulate the value of why jQuery. There's been a lot of pushback lately against jQuery and it's important for you to look in the code base and go, yes, that is why we are still using jQuery today because we have to support this weird opera sizing bug or whatever it is, right? Or I don't wanna write five get element by IDs because I don't wanna force my DOM to have ID tags. It doesn't matter. Just pick something that's truthful, right? <laughs> Figure that out, okay? DOM interactions. You have to understand the DOM. You have to understand HTML. You got to understand the relationship between, you know, for example, let's say you have a label tag and you, you wrap a form tag in it versus using the for attribute, which forces you to put an IDE on it and it changes the styling rules, right? Those kind of things about the DOM, you got, you got to recognize. You got to understand what AJAX is doing for any HTML when it swaps things out and the ramifications for the DOM when you do a repaint versus a reflow. You know, knowing the difference to those things, being able to articulate them makes you sound like a regular web developer. Now, I've been interviewing, that's advanced. It's very advanced stuff. But employers expect that to be beginner stuff. Okay, so just be aware. If you're lucky, you'll talk to someone like me. If you're unlucky, you'll talk to other people like, you don't know what a replay versus reflow? Exit, we're done with here. Next candidate. So, APIs. You don't have to know all the APIs, but if you say like, I'm an HTML5 developer and you can't even suggest how to use, you know, like the, the geo location API or the web worker API, or even why you use the web worker API, like those kind of things. You don't have to memorize the exact API, but if you have, you got some code snippets on your desk, you know, maybe you're a piece of paper or your laptop you bring into an interview and you talk about it, maybe you start a discussion about it. That's cool, right? Some interviews, they just want you to, you know, answer the questions. Can you, can I hit the checkbox on my, piece of paper. You don't want to work for those companies, but if you really need a job or maybe you're an intern, you, you don't really care, you'll take anything, that's how you play the game. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to get into advice right now, but these are the things that you need to know, okay, for just broad net employers. CSS. So if you're a JavaScript developer, you can actually get away with not knowing a lot of CSS. However, it helps to know the difference between the common things. Like what's the difference between absolute versus relative positioning versus the box model? What is the box model? People love that question. I have no idea. <laughs> That's an acceptable answer, but I could code an Angular app like Berkey Uh What's a selector versus a style versus an extending a style? You know things like that. Um, basic SVG skills. This isn't. I, I say this is an optional, but it's really not because a lot of the more design-heavy and interactive graphing solutions, especially in the enterprise today, are all about SVG. You're not going to use DOM elements. You're not going to use Canvas. You can use SVG, right? So it helps to have basic knowledge on how do you create that. Maybe you've never used Illustrator in your life. That's fine. Open it up, create an SVG file, and try to play with it in HTML, something like that, okay? Just so you can have a reasonable conversation about it. Basic Canvas skills. Why would you use Canvas versus the DOM? What is the Canvas good for, right? Those kind of things versus the DOM. Why would I even use it? Even if you've never used it, if you can answer questions like that, you can make up the rest, okay? So that's from the JavaScript perspective. I'm assuming that you can take all that, open Notepad, and code something. Now, if you can't remember it, it's fine. Open you know, the docs. But as long as you can produce code within 10 minutes, most people are good. That's number one. Number two is an MVC framework. So this is really simple. I don't care which one it is. Pick one. Backbone, Ember, Angular, XJS. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, Knockout, Exoskeleton. Doesn't matter. Just pick one. Explain what's the value of MVC. Why would you use an MVC framework? And why would you do it on the client versus the server where they already have these things, right? That kind of stuff, it's important. If you have a model on the client, what is it, right? If you have like server-side data, what is the model? Uh, you know, what's the value for using local storage in your models versus your controllers versus your views, blah, 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 like all that stuff. You need to know, you know, why Backbone approaches things certain ways. How do you deal with common problems in those frameworks? So for example, if, if you say, I know Backbone and somebody says, cool, what is your strategy for dealing with invalidation? Or what is your strategy for dealing with composition of subchild classes with multiple render flows? Like, I'll use Marionette. Cool. That's an acceptable answer. You know, things like that you need to know. Um, Angular. If you're doing Angular, like, why would you use an attribute directive versus another directive? You know, what's your, do you like the state? 
provider router versus the regular router, like those kind of things. You need to, you know, at least be able to intelligently talk about it. If you don't know MVC, but you're really awesome at jQuery, state that up front. If you're capable of actually coding really good solutions from an MVC perspective, or even a pattern perspective, or even a code perspective, like you have really good looking functions from jQuery, then you, you may give them the, you know, understanding that you may have the aptitude to quickly hit the ground running to learn MVC. That's cool. If they have, you know, a, a team in place like we do, right? I'm hiring right now. We have a team in place of senior developers that we could take on someone like that and bring them up to speed. Other teams are expecting you to be the MVC expert. A lot of people are hiring one HTML5. They have an army of server side developers. In that case, your jQuery knowledge and lack of knowledge in MVC framework is not going to work. They're looking for people who know MVC because that is their demarcation or understanding of if they know the MVC, they must know how to build HTML5 web applications. I know it's ridiculous, but that's what they use. So no one, pick one, doesn't matter. Let me say that again, it doesn't matter. People get really hung up and really nervous about, you know, and insecure about making a decision and then they become religious about this framework is better than the others, it doesn't matter, pick one. They all work, there's plenty of applications out in the wild providing real customer value that users do like, that do make money and they use different frameworks. They're using XJS, they're using Angular, they're using Backbone, pick one, okay? If it's not popular, be wary. Use common sense when picking one, obviously. Just because it's popular doesn't mean it's great. However, if it's you know only got like two commits on GitHub and it's only been in action for two months, I don't know, alarm bells. <laughs> common sense, people. All right, CSS frameworks. Number three, you have to know, or at least be familiar as to why you'd use a CSS framework. Examples include, you know, less and SAS. Why would you write less versus CSS? Why would you write SAS versus CSS? What's the point of it? What does it do? Even simple things is like, why well, I like changing a variable and all my fonts change. Fantastic. You've already beat nine out of the 10 people <laughs> in the interview because you know that, right? If you can state like, well, SAS has been on less with some of the ideas with dealing the box model of the blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Now you're 10 out of the 10 people. That's fantastic. Knowing or having experience with bootstrap and foundation, or even is even being able to intelligently speak about like, well, I don't need rims and bootstrap because of blah, 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 or my challenges with foundation were really based around adaptive design. So I changed it to liquid, which allowed me to extend my grid model to whatever. Just, you need to be able to understand that value, why? And again, this is for HTML5 development. If you're a designer, I'm assuming this is your expertise area and the frameworks in jQuery are a little different, but if you're a developer, these are the things that you want to, you know, invest time in at least to read and have a familiarity and go, oh yes, I could uh, use those styles and have components immediately. If you want to get extra credit, look at some of the plugins that people have already written for like Bootstrap, for both Angular, Backbone, Ember, you know, things like that, right? Here, well, I use, yeah, I like Bootstrap and I was using it for the foundation, but I was really not familiar with the styles because the plugin abstracted those concerns for me. Cool, that's an acceptable answer. Those are the three main things, JavaScript, an MVC framework, and be familiar with, be able to intelligently, reasonably speak about why you would use a CSS framework, such as less SAS or even something with components in it like Bootstrap or Foundation. Extra credit, optional. If you know these, they may help in certain niche industries, particular company sizes, etc. Number one, build systems. If you don't know Node, Bower, and Grunt, most people like me are gonna get nervous. There are a lot of large companies doing large JavaScript applications without these things. So it is completely valid to build without them. However, it is significantly efficient to utilize them nowadays. The community is huge. It's starting to get old, which means it's battle hardened and thus it's enterprise ready, okay? The challenges with Bower and things like that is that they currently are not easily tweaked to hit internal repos. So for example, if you're used to using Maven with Artifact or you can hit the remote one or you can hit the internal company one that you have, whatever you call it, right? Bower node right now default to GitHub. So if you, you know, are used to those kind of things, that's an understanding. But the point is, is that there's some startups and everyone's this is expect you to node, node, NPM, not node from the server, Node.js server, but Node.js from a, a client side, you know, runtime thing. And Bower, what's the difference between NPM and Bower? Why would you use those? And either Grunt or Gulp, doesn't matter. Just pick one, okay? If you're familiar with a build system like that and the value it provides, why you're gonna minify your code, why you have a development build versus production, why you're gonna have your HTML templates inside your actual JS file, blah, 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 all that stuff. Very, very important, okay? It's an optional, but it's if you know it, it's a leg up, it's really good. 
you know, for example, there's people who know grunt but don't know karma. That's okay because they can learn karma because it's part of grunt, right? I have confidence in their ability to learn it. Thus, when I'm interviewing them, I'm more likely to say, you're legit. Make sense? Number two, a module system. Not every project uses a module system. Even with ng boilerplate for Angular, you don't even need necessarily, you know, CommonJS or RequireJS or Browserify. But if you do know RequireJS or CommonJS AMD modules or Browserify modules, Atomify modules, whatever. If you know some form of module system, even Yup Note, right? As long as you know some module system, then that's a leg up because most people in JavaScript, you know, are still even on enterprise applications with multi-team members editing in a single file, like a large single file. They just haven't figured out the module or workflow, right? Because the tools just aren't there. At least they haven't invested time in investing them, like you know, grunt workflow. So knowing a module system makes me believe that you recognize the value of you know multiple files, object-oriented programming, packages, organization. Number three, a charting library. There are a ton of small companies and large enterprises that love charts. They love interactive charts. They love charts with tons of data that animate. So whether it's D3 or something higher level like Raphael or the XJS charts that are just plug and play with their weird collection record things, whatever it is, if you have experience with that, that goes a long way. If you're a designer and you have charts experience, phew, dude, that's awesome. Lastly, WebGL. This is advanced, but there's a lot of people who are making some amazing things with 3GS. The agencies, design agencies, they call themselves, I don't know, like mobile solution providers nowadays, whatever. They're an ad agency. So they have you know, two-week projects, short deadlines, they're deadline driven, and they're usually fixed budget projects, right? So if you can make something awesomely pretty and awesome in 3D and WebGL using 3GS or some other, you know, raw API. That is something they want. Okay. So again, in conclusion, you don't have some of those optional things, but that is what you should be focusing your time on. You need to be learning JavaScript. You need to be able to produce code, play with the APIs every night. If you don't know them, uh, jQuery, you know, get familiar with all the core things about it. You know, make sure you can use every single API from the most part of you can do services, you can do DOM manipulation, you can add and remove styles, you can play with your own styles, like whether it's a selector or actually custom one you've written for particular elements, right? As well as some of the animations. You get most of that, you'll, you'll know most of jQuery. The rest of it, yeah, it's good to know, but those are the cores, okay? Um, all the design patterns, all the basics of programming that have nothing to do with JavaScript, right? You know that, you'll be good to go. Know the DOM, be familiar with it, be able to intelligently speak about it. Some of the newer HTML5 APIs, why you would use them, maybe, you know, if you don't know the web worker API, that's fine, but you, if you know why you would use it, you can learn the API. Uh, CSS, some of the basics of CSS, really helpful enough. If you don't know the basics, you can get away with that, but it makes you look weird, like me. MVC framework, pick one, doesn't matter. CSS framework, just to understand why it's there, pick one. If you know one, hey, that's even better. So again, I hope this helps you trying to get an HTML5 development role to target what exactly you should be knowing. What, what are employees looking for? That's what we're looking for. I'm hiring. These are the things I would like you to know. If you know Angular, that's great. <laughs> Backbone's okay, but something, right? Build system, hey, even better. Again, if you got any other questions about this, I'll make a future video about how to actually beat these tech interviews because they are ridiculous. Ridiculous. Our industry is really bad at interviewing, so I hope that I can help you with that. But anyway, you got any other questions, hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and don't forget to subscribe, and I hope this helps. Good luck. Keep your, keep your chin up. These interviews are brutal. And I know it's a lot to learn, but you can figure it out.